Hi guys, this is Alex here, back again with another video. Today I'm going to do PCSX2 as the new build 1.6.0 is out and it's got some cool new features. Uh, it's been a long time since I've done the last video, so I thought it's time to get an update in. Let's jump right in. First, you want to head over to PCSX2.net. I will leave a link in the description below to find that, or you can Google it. Once we're going to there, we're going to head over to the download page. We're going to download this guide for Windows. This all works for Windows, but you can also download for Linux. Once we're here, we're going to click on the PCX2 1.60 standalone installer. We're going to click on the download on the right hand side of the screen. Save the file. Once it's done that, we can minimize. We then can go to our downloads folder. And we can drag the PCSX2 setup onto our desktop. Once we've done that, we can double click. Let's do a normal installation. Click next. Click yes. You can then decide which shortcuts you want. I'm going to deselect start, but keep desktop. Then you want to select destination folder. I'm going to keep it in the default for ease of use. Don't worry about the sign. This is if you already have the old version of PCSX2 installed. If you currently do and you're looking to update it, feel free to, as a thing, back up your existing folder into a the not program files. So if you want to keep your saved games and stuff like that, feel free to do so. Otherwise, if you're installing for the first time, this will not appear. So I'm just going to click OK. Once it's done, we're going to run PCSX2. We're going to have the language selector at the top here. I'm going to leave it on system default, but if you'd like to change it, you can here. Once we've done that, we're going to click next. We're going to ignore this as we're going to be setting this up later, but it won't be coming on the screen. We'll just be doing it generally once we go to the general settings. Click next. We then need to select a BIOS ROM. So we now need to grab our BIOS, find this, head back over to your browser of choice. And we have BIOS files here. I will link them down in the description below so you can find this. Once you're here, look for PlayStation 2 and click on the BIOS files link. It will then take you over to Mediafire. Click download. Click save file. Click OK. As you see it's downloading and I'll be back once this is downloaded. OK, the BIOS file is downloaded. I've now had it over to my downloads folder. Once here, find the PS2 BIOS.zip and drag it onto your desktop. Once you've done that, feel free to right click, new folder, and rename it BIOS. And then drag the zip into the BIOS folder like so. Open it up, right click, 7-zip, extract here. Wait for the device to extract. Once it's done that, we can now delete your zip folder for PS2 BIOS.zip. I actually recommend at this stage is finding the shortcut for PCS62 1.60. Right click, open file location, and simply dragging the BIOS into here. It will ask for administration permission. Click continue. If you don't have administrative position, just leave it on the desktop. Once you've done that, click continue. Now we need to select the BIOS. So refresh list and make sure to untick use default setting. Once you've done that, click browse, head to your main drive, programs 86 and look for PCSX2. It's right here. And here's the BIOS folder we just moved in. If you didn't move the BIOS folder over, then simply go onto your desktop and look for it there. Once you've done that, select the folder and it will come up with China, Europe, Japan, USA and all the BIOS versions. It doesn't really matter which one you pick. For this guide I'm just going to do USA version 2.3 simply because um, some ROMs are US and stuff like that I use quite a lot. I'm just going to select that. You can also change this any time, so if you want to come back, it's fine. But like I said, it doesn't really matter what you select. Once you've done that, click Finish. 
and PCX2 is now launched 1.60. So the first thing we're going to do is go into config, video, plugin settings, and we're just going to come up with the renderer here. It's going to be on Direct 3D11. This is the fully recommended one. I do not recommend using any of the other ones. But if you have trouble in the game, feel free to try out OpenGL. Once you've done that, make sure you select your GPU. As you can see, it's on default hardware device, but I want to use my GPU, the AMD Radeon 5700 XT. You can leave this on default, and texture version can also be left on bilinear. We then want to change the native resolution. So, custom is not recommended nowadays, but you can, as you can see, it supports 720p, 1080p, 1440p, 4K and even 5K. I'm going to put mine on 5K just to see where it lasts, but you do not have to do that. I recommend putting on anti filtering to 16 times. Uh, you can leave min mapping, leave that as well. I recommend keeping it as fast, and this is also recommended here. Once you've done that, we can click OK and exit out of this. Head back over to config, emulation settings, scroll down to speed hacks, and here we have micro VU hacks. Uh, now, if you have three cores or more, so you know this is only recommended to people with CPU cores of three or more, then I recommend ticking this box and clicking apply. I will have you of note that some games this can cause graphical errors, not in all, not in many, but if you do experience them, feel free to try unticking this and then trying the game again. Next, click on GS window, and here you can change the aspect ratio. It will be on the standard 4x3, which is for the old TVs with the black bars on the side. If you would like to change it to widescreen, which I recommend because I personally prefer it on a modern aspect ratio, flash on your monitor so it fills the whole thing. You can also change the FMVs, these are basically like the cutscenes within the game, you can even have it off, or you can force it to play maybe the cutscenes in 4x3, but you want the game playing in 16x9, or you can just, you know, put it in 16x9 as well. I'm just going to leave it off for now, but you can customize that however you like. Once you've done that, click apply and click OK. Next thing we want to do is set up your controller. So, what we're going to do is we're going to exit out of PCSX2, close it out. I then like you to connect your controller, so if you're using an Xbox controller like me, connect it, and you can also use DualShock 4 controller. Once it's connected, reopen PCSX2, head over to config, click on controllers, and plug in settings. Once here, I have device diagnostics, and you can see all the input devices it currently recognizes. Head over to pad 1, and as you can see, it will automatically be a quick setup for uh, Xbox. I'm not sure about PlayStation, but I'm sure it also has quick setup. If you're struggling in any case, you can always right click here and you can clear all. You can then click on the corresponding vision, for example L1. I'll then click L1 and as you can see, left shoulder L1 is applied. I'm no, and you can go through all of these. I'm just going to do a quick setup though because it's a lot easier, so I'm going to cancel out. Go back in my config, controllers, plugin settings, add one. And yeah, that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to click OK. Finally, we have just have to show you the games and how to boot up with memory cards and stuff. And then the guide will be finished. Now, for your games, you have two options. If you have a ton of old PS2 games with the original disc like me, and you know I've got like 50, over 50 PS2 games or the old ones. If you have a ton of those and you just want to use them, I'm going to leave a video, it's going to pop up as a white bubble on the top right hand side of the screen and I'll leave a link in the description below as I have a video on how to uh, burn slash copy your original PS2 disc onto the PC so you can use for PCSX2. However, if you don't have an original disc and you're looking for one, then I re recommend two sites, vims.net layer or I recommend archive.org. I will leave links down below in the description you would like to use that. And once you've found the game and you've either downloaded it, got the copy for it, burnt your original disc, once you've done that, I will quickly show you the last little bit you have to set up, we have to do. Okay, so once you've got your game, you've downloaded it, 
Um, for example, if you download it from archive.org or vims.net, then what you want to do is drag your 7-zip folder you've got in your downloads folder, drag that onto your desktop. Once you drag that onto your desktop, you can close out of your downloads folder, right click, new folder, name it games or PS2, games for PS2, whatever you want to call it. Drag your 7-zip into there, right click, 7-zip, extract here, or you can also open archive, minimize, and then simply drag the ISO into here. I'll speed this up for you. Okay, it's extracted. As you can see, I've got a new folder here, an ISO folder. So simply close out of the archive. You can now close out of here. You can also delete the zip folder if you no longer want it, but if you want to back up, you can always keep it. Close out of here. Go to system. Nope, sorry. Go to CD uh, VD. Go to IS selector. Click browse. And here we want to go over to your desktop. We've just made games PS2. Let's then open this folder and select Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, because that is the game I'm using. Once you've done that, as you can see, it will then be selected in your ISO selector. And we want to go on System and Boot ISO Full. It will then boot the PlayStation, as you can see here, for the first time. Come up the old logo. Select a language. And then you, as you can see, select any language here. France, English, you name it. I'm going to say English. Time zone, doesn't really matter, does it? And yep. Approve, approve, approve. As you can see in the top hand side of the corner, we have speed. It's currently on 100% and running at about 60 FPS or 59 to 60 FPS. That means you're good. You know, as long as your speed is 95% and over, that is awesome. If it's below that, maybe try change, uh, you know, render down the resolution settings or, um, you know, try anti structure filtering, try drop that on two times, try, you know, help your GPU out a bit. Once you've done that, click the enter. PlayStation 2. And hopefully your game will now boot. If this guide has helped you, uh, oh, sorry, wait. <laughs> memory card, select memory card one, settings not found, that's fine. Sorry guys for the slight cut. If you're updating from a previous uh, old version, like 1.4 to 1.6, then what I want you to do is right click 1.6, open file location, quickly head over to your start menu, type in PCSX2, and as you can see, it will come up with PCSX2 backup. Type in the full thing with the underscore if it's not coming up with just that. Open it up. And as you can see, there's a uh, folder here called mem cards right here. Simply copy. Or you can just simply move it in, but I'm just going to copy to keep a backup. Click paste, click continue. And now all your save files from your previous games will be carried over with you. Okay, that's it. It will automatically create a new memory card for you. And it's launched into a new game, like I say, new game, the game's all up and running. If this guide helps you guys, please feel free to subscribe, comment, like, rate, all of the above. Check out my other videos, I've got a semi-tutorial video I just released, which uh, goes over Zelda Breath of the Wild and the so on. I've also got a PS3 emulator guide for RPCS3. I will leave that at the end of the video. Cheers guys, Alex out.